Welcome back live, everyone. We continue our coverage of the 2017 Stanley Cup Championship Parade here at Point State Park. Bob Pompiani and Ken Rice, along with a whole bunch of people, maybe half a million, maybe more than last year. We'll find out from the city a little later how many people. But one thing we know, this fan base is so supportive of this team, and we saw it so many different times. All the consecutive sellouts that now stretch over 500, plus the fact that the other night at a watch party, it sold out instantly. So while the game was in Nashville, a lot of people who didn't get an opportunity to, to, to come to games had a chance to get that experience inside PPG Paints Arena, plus another five or 10,000 outside. So, I mean, people are crazy about this team, and why not? In 10 years, the last decade, can they have done things that no other NHL team has done? Three Stanley Cup championships, Four appearances in the finals, five Eastern Conference finals, the most wins, the most playoff wins, you name it, they've done it. And it's all right here in your hometown. All right, the parade route from Grant Street down the Boulevard of the Allies to Commonwealth Place and here to Point State Park. Let's take you over to the beginning of the parade and Rick Dayton. Rick, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Mark Recchi just going by, and we saw Phil Bork, the old two-niner. He's on a convertible right behind one of those duck boats. Now, he may have had the most famous parade comment of all time, or Pittsburgh celebration comment. Remember, 1991, when the old two-niner said, hey, let's take the cup, go down to the river, and party all summer long. Well, you know what? I just get the sense that they may relive that one a time or two before this one is all said and done. Some of the members of the Penguins front office staff and Penguins radio, you know, Mike Lang had the call about, you know, smiling like the butcher's dog. Well, I'm sweating like the butcher's dog right now. It is hot on the streets. Here comes another one of the bands, East Allegheny and Penn Trafford getting together. We have seen Alderdice. We have seen Mount Lebanon. We've seen North Allegheny and now more of the entertainment for the fans. It's just going to be a little bit more, about four or five more units after this. And then this place is really going to come unglued because the people who are standing 15 and 25 deep are going to see some of their favorite players come riding through town. And oh, by the way, toward the tail end of the parade, we expect we will see a very large silver cup. We will see a Prince of Wales trophy. We'll see a Conn Smythe trophy because the boys are bringing the hardware down through the streets. Speaking of smaller versions, replicas, if you will, of Lord Stanley's Cup as East Allegheny and Penn Trafford entertain right now. A lot of them decked out in their own Penn's regalia, making sure that they're set to celebrate properly and appropriately. But again, music is certainly a big part of it. People celebrating all through Music City in Nashville. They thought they had it salted up because their team had been so good at home until the Penguins went in to Bridgestone Arena and took a 2-0 hard-earned victory in Game 6. And with that, it means that it was enough wins for the Penguins to get win number 16. And with win number 16 came Stanley Cup number five. So as the bands are wrapping up their uh, march through town, we continue on with some more of the people who are here who had so much to do during the course of the year with helping this team continue to be successful. People from the front office and also see some of the things that they do behind the scenes to make this team so successful. As far as the parade itself and how many units are going to be in it, well, we do know that a lot of the players will be together in two or three together. Some of the players, some of the big name stars will be by themselves. Some of the coaches may be grouped together, but some of the coaches like Mike Sullivan may be by himself. Some of the smiling fans are smiling uh, front office kids cheering on the trolleys, let's go pens, and that always gets a big response from the uh, fans who are assembled down here. Flags waving all over the place, Stanley Cup 2017. You know, the other thing that you see is you see an awful lot of the old shirts. You see some of the 2009 t-shirts from years gone by. Maybe you see a 91 or a 92, but a lot of people, this entire duck boat right here, decked out in the 2017 group. Now, we are getting to the point where it's about to get serious down here. And the reason we're about to get serious, how about the Stanley Cup hat we've got up here on top? Check that out. That is quite a look. That's the kind of stuff that we're talking about because fans are getting excited about it. But as we turn from her and look back toward the uh, busway, this is when it's really getting serious. And the fans can kind of sense what's going on here. Mounted units from Pennsylvania State Police are here. They are part of the parade. They could be here for crowd control, but right now they are here to lead your Pittsburgh Penguins down along Grant Street. And here they come, the Pittsburgh Penguins, starting out 
with Tom Kuhnhackle. There's the crowd. I told you. I told you it was going to happen. And they start cranking it up. Josh Archibald, number 45. Chad Ruedel is there. And Tom Kuhnhackle. Kuhnhackle went through this last year. He knows what to expect. His dad, a German-born hockey player who played professionally in Europe for a long time. And now he's got a chance to maybe have his name on the cup two different times. And again, you can just sense the appreciation that these fans have for these players. They're going to be spread out among some of the people that keep them on the ice. For instance, this is some of the medical training staff right now, the people, the doctors who spend time with the players. And it's amazing how quickly they get some of these guys back on the ice. Maybe it's a matter of stitching them up. Maybe it's a matter of making sure that a knee or an ankle is okay before they put them back out there on the ice. But the medical staff and the training staff all doing everything they can. The staff right now is all PPG Paints Arena, and they are some of the people who are up with a game day logistics, making sure that the arena is ready to go, the entertainment, the in-game entertainment is ready. They are a big part of the game experience as well. Now, when we get through this next duck boat is some front office staffers. We're going to the Cosby jersey right there on front, waving the flags, waving the towels. We're going to start getting into really the meat of the parade, which is when the parade features your Pittsburgh player or Pittsburgh Penguins players. Taking a look at just a couple more before we get to the main event. A lot of security down here, not only in the air overhead with helicopters, but Pittsburgh police is part of it, state police is part of it, county police is involved. We have seen Port Authority and Port Authority police. Some of the people who are involved in the pyrotechnics, we love our fireworks around here, don't we? They set them off inside the arena, and this was part of the crew that made it possible. And now we're going to fire up some cannons. Yep, black and gold flying everywhere. Look out. Now it's a parade. When you've got the pyrotechnics and you've got this confetti flying, you know it's going to be time for a big time party. Now, here we go. Cheers are about to go crazy because we're seeing the penguins come around the corner. Carter Rowney, Scott Wilson. What a run those two had as they were so big in helping to keep the Penguins in games. Maybe the Stars didn't have a great game. Maybe they didn't have the goal. But you know what? These guys, the unsung heroes, the reason why they were able, the Pens, I mean, to have the run that they did. Ron Hainsey, number 65, first one that Sidney Crosby gave the cup to. Played 14 years in the National Hockey League, never never went to a playoff game. He's on a float right now out there with uh, Straight. It was another player who hadn't had a lot of experience in the playoffs. A couple of veterans that were brought in here. Trevor Daly in the black truck right there, number six. What an acquisition Daly was. Jim Rutherford has been masterful at this. Hainsey came in from Carolina trade deadline this year. Daly, a couple years ago. Justin Schultz, another one who was a late acquisition. Picks these players up at the deadline, and the role that they have played has been absolutely unarguable. They have done things, the little things, digging pucks out of the corner, making plays off the glass, flipping it high in the air, doing what they had to do to block shots. Those are the heart and soul of this Penguins team. We're going to head down the boulevard right now, head down Grant Street, and see what Richie Walsh has got going on. Rich. All right, thanks a lot, Rick. Here I'm at the corner of Grant and the Boulevard of the Allies, and it's a pretty amazing sight here right now. You can look. Remember that picture of the parking garage? Well, there it is right now. It was packed last year. You saw that picture trending all over South social media. You can also see the sign off the new building that they're working on. They were working on this last year. Con congratulations, Penguins. Now, the start of the parade has hit the corner here. So we're probably about 20 minutes away from getting the first sight of a player, which would be Tom Kunackles in the first car. This is your North Allegheny marching band coming through right now. Some sights of what it's like here from the corner. If you look at the fans here, there's six, seven people deep. Waiting to see the Stanley Cup and all the players that were part of this winning team in Nashville. 
a few days ago. Right now, let's go back to Rick Dayton.